Hello Internet! Today we are going to talk about global usings. This is a feature that was introduced in C Sharp 10 that allows you to include namespaces that you would normally have in most or some of your files automatically in everything. Um, so this gives you a way to include with one using statement a namespace in every single file and source file in your compilation. Um, typically that's going to cover your entire project so you can just include it once and then it should just work everywhere. Um, so we're going to kind of do this uh, for this demo. I have turned off implicit usings. Um, if you do not know what that is, then uh, there will be another video somewhere uh, where I talk about that. <laughs> um, but we're just going to go and walk through a really quick demo of how this works so you can use it in your own projects because it's pretty cool. Um, so I have a really basic uh, console app here that we can use to just kind of walk through some things. Uh, so if I want to use some something to like let's say create a file um, we're gonna do system dot io uh, dot actually let's use link because why not <laughs> this way we're not doing file operations system dot link and then we can include that so let's go and throw that in a using statement up on top here and then we're going to be working with data so we want to be able to modify that data but we <laughs> in order to do that we need something to actually do with that. The problem with this is now I have system.link, but if I want to use this in other files, I also have to include system.link. Uh, so if you're creating a project that has lots of other dependencies or just has lots of different namespaces as part of its design, you're going to have lots of usings at the top of your file. Um, I've, I've worked on projects in the past that have an entire page full of using statements, and that's a little bit much. Um, so what we can do here is instead of writing something like system.link to include the uh, extension methods across our project for working with link stuff, we can do like new uh, string array, because that's what we're going to work with, I guess. Uh, and let's go and figure out some information. So let's go and grab the t dot first. We're going to get the first character of everything uh, where uh, that character is less than H. Sure. <laughs> um, uh, I guess that makes sense. Uh, let's throw this in a list instead. There we go. Uh, also, we're going to need to include a list because that's a thing, too. Again, this is another thing that we might want to throw into our, our global usings. Um, keep in mind, if you're working with the default console app, you won't see this. Um, again, I turned off implicit usings just because I want to use system types without importing namespaces. Um, and implicitly, these are already globally defined for you, so you don't need to worry about this normally. Um, this is typically for uh, other libraries that you would be pulling in, um, just to make the demo a little bit easier um, and, and simpler. <laughs> We're, we're using system libraries for this. Um, so if we want to write this and include this in lots of different files, we would need to include system.link in all of them. Instead of doing that, what we can do is throw a global in front of that. So if we call it a global using, uh, these need to be, I believe, at the top. There we go. <laughs> And so instead of defining something as just using, which would apply to the file, now we're applying this across everything in the compilation scope. What that means is that every single source file that is a part of this project, when I hit build, is also going to look in this namespace and try to resolve types that way. This can be really useful for, like again, lots of namespaces. So we have this. Let's go and try to create another file. Um, and use the same thing. So we can go here and let's create some helper that's going to be called like our sorter. Uh, what this is going to do is be a public static class, so it's public void um, or ienumerable object. And it's just going to sort that object. So we're going to say just sort uh, some list. So I enumerable of an object list. <laughs> um, there we go. 
Uh, and if we want to sort this, what we can do, this needs to be static, is just return the sorted list. So list dot order by. Uh, and let's just finish this. There we go. And again, we're working with links, so I'm going to complete my statement so we're not returning in a lazily evaluated thing. Um, but this gives us the ability to actually sort things. And I did this uh, without needing any of this. <laughs> so let's get rid of every using, actually. Let's just delete them all. Um, so there's no using statements left in this. You can see there's errors here. We're going to go to our program file and fix the compilation errors in this file. Um, because we don't have using statements here. So we're going to do that by just adding another global uh, using statement. So something like this. Um, again, these go at the top. Typically, this isn't going to be an issue. We'll talk a little bit about why in just a second. Um, but if we do this, suddenly our sorter works. Now we have this sort method that isn't including any new using statements, isn't relying on anything. It's just using our global defined using statements. Um, so you can do this across your project, especially if you have like specific helper libraries that you're importing um, or maybe data types in some specific namespace that you're going to use everywhere. This gives you a way to kind of import those and use them everywhere without having to constantly be importing them in every single file. Um, typically, uh, I did kind of mention this at the beginning, but you're not going to typically write files like this. At least that's not what I would recommend. Um, instead, what you can do is create a usings file. Um, and this isn't any specific thing. You can name this whatever you want because it's just another C sharp file. These global usings can be anywhere. So one of the useful things to do is to kind of consolidate them into one place. So you have a globally defined imports just kind of there. And you can use that and everybody knows where to look for those rather than scattering them across your project because then they get hard to find um, and you may not want that to be the case. So we're just going to call this like global usings, um, not to be confused with the name of this uh, C sharp project because that's what the C sharp project is called. Um, but we're just going to delete everything um, and go to our program file and just copy these two global usings. And now everything breaks again. That's fine. But if we go here, we can include this. Let's also just include our system thing. Uh, so global using system. And now we have all three things. All of our usings can just live here. And we can delete them from all of our other files. And now we still have a valid program. Everything still works. Everything should compile. Um, so if I run this, it should work. Um, this is not going to show anything. Um, but it will build and it will run. <laughs> when we do this. Um, and that's because all of the using statements in our project are coming from that global namespace. Um, so you can use that to simplify your projects. Hopefully, um, hopefully this is helpful. Um, and like I did mention, um, typically in a console app, you're not going to see or be able to reproduce this without turning implicit usings off. Um, this is another feature that was added in C Sharp 10. And we'll talk about that in another video. Um, so hopefully this is useful and it kind of helps you build uh, your projects in a, in a nicer way. Um, if you use it, let, let me know. Other than that, uh, I will see you in the next video. So till then, see you, internet.